Well, good morning. And welcome to New Thought Unity Center on this lovely Sunday morning. We're glad that you're here. A um, couple of people are not on stage today. Alice is not feeling well this morning, so we send out prayers and, and thoughts and prayers to her. And um, Mike Barrett is on a road trip with his daughter. His daughter was driving a, a car all the way across the country, and she did not want her to go alone. And so I... He did not want her to go alone. She did. She wanted him to come with her, and so, uh, so. Uh, but we we have an, um, a wonderful friend, a familiar face. Uh, Mike Scharf is on the bass this morning, back from um, a too long hiatus. So, um, and Althea is here. And guess what? JJ is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So we're going to start with what is ever present, the love that is here. One, two, three. The presence of the love is here. The presence of the love is here. Take it out there. I feel it in the atmosphere. Oh yeah. The presence of the love is here. The presence of the love is here. The spirit of the love is here. The spirit of the love is here. It's right here yeah. I feel it in the atmosphere. The spirit of the love is here. The spirit of the love is here. The power of the love is here. Come on, fill it, y'all. The power of the love is here. Move in your seats if you want to. I feel it in the atmosphere. The power of the that song, didn't you? I picked that song. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I did so. And um, good morning, New Thought Unity Center. How are you? And my voice is doing some weird things, but it'll be here on time. All right. Amen. Okay. How y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? If you feel the presence of love in here, stand up and say the presence of love is here. The 
presence of love. The presence of love is here, right here, right now. Amen. 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 The presence of love. Yes, Amen. Thank Look you. at somebody next to you and say, The presence of the love is here. The presence of the love is here. The presence, the presence of, of the love, David, is here. Hallelujah. Thank All you, All right. King. Yes. All right. Ooh, you can have a seat. Thank you. Good vibration. Let us do our affirmation. Our affirmation is, I know the presence of God dwells in you and me. Let's say that together. I, I know, know the, the presence, presence of God, God dwells, dwells in, in you, you and, and me. me. Do you receive that this morning? Amen. Give yourselves a round of applause if you receive Ooh, that this amen. morning. Hallelujah. Because spirit lives in you. Yes. And spirit lives in me. And we be the we. It be usins as they say down home. Usins. We ends. <laughs> and when we get down to it, we just say, hey, y'all. How you been doing? <laughs> and that means all y'all. All y'all. <laughs> Amen. I want to take us into prayer this morning. Knowing on this beautiful spring Sunday morning. On this 18th day of April, the Spirit of God is right where we are right now, in the air we breathe, and the sun that shines on us, and the sun that shines above the clouds, if you're in an area where it's raining, the sun is shining, the presence of love, the presence of God is there, well, right where you are. Oh, I know some people in the sound of my voice this morning are going through some challenges, some changes. But also I want you to know God is right where you are. You don't have to look far. Stand in front of a mirror and look at yourself and say, I am God expressing love, joy, grace, peace, and harmony. And with this, I welcome you all in the sound of my voice, all of you in this sanctuary, to celebrate with us today the power of love here at New Thought Unity Center. And so it is, and amen. 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 And I shake. Thank you. All right. Let's stand and sing together. I'll sing it first, you sing it next, and when we come together, we sing it all together. Take a look at the person next to you. Take a look at the person next to you. God loves you and I love you too. God loves you and I love you too. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love. We come together. 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 In the name of love. Take a look at the person next to you. Take a look at the person next to you. Say I recognize God in you.
And now's the time when we can turn to one another and say good morning, wave all the way across to say each other's morning, name. Morning. Anybody's morning. out there on the uh, hey, interweb, good morning. we welcome all of our Facebook Live people. Good morning. Please say hello to us and tell us where you're listening from if you're out there in, in the cyber land. And uh, we'd love to recognize you all around the world or just right down the street. You're part of our family, and we're glad that you're here. Let's kick it up one more time. Are we ready? One, two, three. time in our service where we do our mission and our vision statement together. So if you'll join me in saying our mission statement, in God, we are an inclusive, abundant community, experiencing love, transforming lives, and serving others. Our vision statement, we celebrate a world of harmony and oneness a place of loving stewardship, sacred connections, and pure joy, where all are welcomed with honor and respect. And we want you to know that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, know that you are always welcome here. Our doors are open to be of service. And so we do that with an open heart, a loving heart, and a gentle spirit. Thank you. And wherever you've been, we hope that you feel welcome here because you are. Don't have to change anything. We take everybody just as they are. Now, there's some work to do on the spiritual path afterwards, but you get to choose when and how and where. But if we can be of assistance, then that's what this center is about, coming together and feeling the love. And um, I'd like to recognize Regina is here. If anybody is here in person, and wants uh, more information about uh, the center. If it's your first time here or first time here in a long time, Regina will be right back uh, in the corner there where it says newcomers and any questions or if you want to tour the um, building or the grounds, then we're happy to have you here for that as well. There's a lot of things going on around the center and uh, we, I just want to highlight a few of those in our weekly announcements all right for all the events the website see the website the email blast or the Facebook page but karaoke oh that's happening on May the 7th not this coming Friday but the Friday after that May the 7th Kim uh, DJ Kim Ballou hosts this fun and safe event in Friendship Hall bring your own snacks and drinks we've been having fun safe events in Friendship Hall we had movies a couple of weeks ago we had the Sufi celebration this, this uh, Wednesday, and so all of that is wonderful. Affordable Housing Trust Amendment Panel Discussion, Monday, April the 26th, 6.30 to 8, NTUC in partnership with the Center for Spiritual Living. <laughs> We're in partnership with the Center for Spiritual Living this morning because JJ's with us. We'll present a community forum on Cincinnati's Affordable Housing Trust Amendment. This panel will discuss, uh, there's a panel here, and there's really some knowledgeable people that are going to be here on that Monday night uh, to provide information to everyone interested in this issue. Also, we need volunteers to help with this event, to take temperatures, direct guests around the center, usher, or help direct parking. Now, this event is probably going to pull a lot of people into the building that have never been here before, so we do need um, those volunteers to help us 
You can call Linda Miller, the secretary, at 513-961-2527 or email secretary at ntunity.org if you want to be uh, with us. It's more than just a panel discussion. There's going to be music. There's going to be, um, I think it's going to be an inspirational time to come around this important issue. Friendship Zoom Room. All right, now everybody that's out there in the cyber world, and guess what? Anybody and everybody that has a phone right here can join the, the Friendship Zoom Room after our service. The room is open right after the service, and a link can be found under the current events on the website or in the email blast or in the Facebook during Facebook comments during the service. So remember one thing, you have to bring your own coffee. That was just a joke, okay. Um, <laughs> and if you're still in your pajamas, from the head up, okay? That's fine. That's all we need to see. Um, angels' wings sale on sale on all clothing, purses, shoes, and hats. Accessories on sale. Each item you buy, you get 50% off the second item of equal or lesser value. We're open today from 12 to 3, also hours on Fridays and Saturdays. Check it out. A gallery of Grace is also open today. We, uh, and so that's wonderful, beautiful gifts in Gallery of Grace. Masks up. So um, we, in order to continue to meet together, we need to have, unless we're on the, on the platform and we're spaced the way we're supposed to be, mask needs to be covering both your, your, your mouth and your nose while you're out here. I know, I, anybody find it hard to breathe with your nose in a mask? Okay. But we're going to find. We've got to find a way to do it, and so that we can keep things open and safe for everybody concerned. So, um, so that's important. I got it all covered. Is that right, Susan? She's going to nod to me one way or another. What did she say? <laughs> she got it. Oh, that was a thumb up with a pen. I was confused. All right. <laughs> Loser. No, nope, that wasn't it. She was saying we were good. All right. I'm going to take a breath, and it's time to um, settle into our seats and get ready for our uh, moment of meditation.
invite you to just, wherever you are, take a deep cleansing breath with me. And release. And please, let's just do that one more time. As you exhale, know with me as I know with and for you and each and every one of us that we are exhaling that which no longer serves us in this moment. We're releasing. And as we inhale, that is the, that is the air of God. That is the air of love. That is the air of oneness. That is joy. That is happiness. That is unity. Knowing that there is no separation. Regardless of what appearances may present to you, it is up to you to choose how you want to see it. And I invite you to see the proverbial glass as half full. Half full of all the good stuff and all the God stuff that makes you who you are. Uniquely wonderful. Special. God expressing all there is. Let us go into the silence with these words. As we come back, let us come to the contemplative part of our service, opening our hearts, ready to receive the love of God, which is never failing, which is forever present, and the love of each other. Let us come together oneness of this moment and the love of this moment and so it is surely the presence of God is in this place I can feel God's mighty power
I just call her Songbird today. The other bird is not here, and Sister Alice, we pray that you're feeling better soon. What if God was one of us? What if? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What if God was one of us? What if I tell you God is all of us? Because we are the many in the one who agrees with me this morning. We are the many in the one. God is everywhere present, all powerful, all and so are you, and you, and you, and you. You in the sound of my voice. You are expressing God through you the best way you know how. Some of us may feel that we're not doing a good job as expressing ourselves as God. But what I want you to remember on this day, that you are a spiritual being having a human experience in this space suit called a body on this planet called Earth. You will spiral to your greater greatness in your time. And that time is God's time for you. And that time is always on time. Amen. The title of my talk this morning is The Presence of God, Love, Spirit, Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, whatever we choose to call it he she is here and God is so good all the time you know in the progressive Baptist church we say God is good all the time and what do they say back to us say it again God is good all the time and all the time God is good well I'm going to mention something this morning that is pressed on my spirit. I try not to allow things to enter my space, and my space is my consciousness, to enter my spirit that does not serve me well. So last month when I was here, I shared with some of you that I just stopped watching the news. You know, but when I'm online working on my talks and classes that I have to teach, you know, the internet gives you news whether you want it or not. And I pushed that Google thing that said, you know, where you can adjust it or whatever. And then I fibbed a little bit, forgive me. I said, I already purchased or whatever. But the news just kept coming. And I saw something that had me welling up crying so much. Because how can we say God is good all the time and the presence of God is here when since January we've had 150 mass shootings? I thought, Father, Father, Mother God, what are you saying to us? What are you saying to me? I'm on this faith walk and my heart is heavy. 
that story went by and I prayed and I prayed and I said, Father, I, I need to understand something here. As a minister, people come to you, oftentimes come to me with the question, why? And sometimes I'm going to make it real for you. I just don't know. Sometimes ours is not to reason why. It is. I started thinking about something a friend of mine said to me. She says, JJ, the lines at the food bank should be shorter. Should. I love what my spiritual advisor, Gloria Darby, always says to me. Don't should on me and I won't should on you. And I listened with an open heart, open mind. And all I can say is, there but for the grace of God go I. Her husband shared with her that the, the lines are long and there are nice cars in that line. Well, as the kids say, let's keep it strictly 100. People are hungry. We're coming through the valley, as I said many times here before, but people are hungry. So with the presence of God, the presence of love expressing through you, who are you in Christ's consciousness to judge them? Who are we not to feed them? I think that that's the Christ consciousness expressing in us if we say, I'll be right back when I see you at the sign, with the sign at the intersection of Ridge and 71 exit. And you say, we'll work for food. I have a few dollars on me, but if you're hungry, I'm going down the street and I'll be back. When I see someone behind me in the drive through lots of kids in the car, or maybe even a senior, cent, a, a senior citizen, as my Nana used to tell me, keep living, baby, and one day you're going to get old. Just keep living. I just hope you're as good looking as I am now. I like to pay it forward. Some of you have done that in here because I see your faces. Just, it's McDonald's. It may be Popeyes. Just pay it forward. Because we don't know everyone's struggle. But as Maya Angelou said, be a rainbow in somebody's cloud. There it is, Dave. Didn't know it was coming. <laughs> so we can be a rainbow in somebody's cloud by seeing them the way we want to be seen as love. As loving human beings in this body that's human but really we're spiritual beings. And we're gonna pay it forward because this body is an engine that needs to be fed, the fuel is food. So let us feed those who are hungry. Brother David read an announcement about affordable housing. Some folks said, well, they're homeless, it's not my problem. It's more than about the homeless. It's about those people who spend more than 50% of their income to have a, a roof over their head. And oftentimes they have to stand in that line to get something to eat. Ask yourself, what would the Christ in you do? 
Did the Christ feed the hungry? Or did he judge the hungry? I want to tell you something. I'm keeping an eye on the time, Susan. About a little black girl who dropped out of college at 19 years old at Xavier. You know, my mother used to say, sometimes you really think you're grown at 19, but she said, baby, you don't know nothing. My mother had an eighth grade education. She was a sanitation engineer at the old Stouffer's. That fed my chocolate chunky behind. But I decided I didn't want to listen to the priest anymore. Mind you, I was on a full scholarship, but I dropped out. Got an apartment in the same building with my mama because I figured if I was hungry, mama going to say, come on, get some teat. Not something to eat, some teat. But I didn't count on mama getting very sick. I didn't count on my father cutting me off financially because the money came as long as I was in school. So when I dropped out of school, because I thought I was grown, I was 19, you know, I knew everything. I was in college. I was smarter than everybody in my family. I thought so, you know. But mama said, baby, mama's going in the hospital. They don't know if I have cancer or what, but they have to to work on me. Baby, we're going to have to get up early in the morning. We've got to go down to 7th and Sycamore. For me, when I was a little girl, 7th and Sycamore meant I was going to get a dress at Polly Flanders. Anybody in here remember that? I was getting a dress, something cute for Easter, and some black patent leather shoes and some Vaseline to shine them up when they got dull. But we went to the big building across the street that they called the welfare department. There were hundreds of people in that line, just like we see the lines now with people in cars of all races, of all ages, and the people standing in lines who don't have a car waiting for some bags with their kids to help carry them out of the free store food bank, out of the church pantries. My mother, the day before she went in for surgery, got up early to take me to the welfare department, known today as the Department of Human Services, so I could get food stamps and a general relief card to pay my rent. But I was smarter than everybody else. I just didn't think Daddy would dare cut me off. But as he used to say, I can show you better than I can tell you, baby. He showed me. And he wasn't being cruel. It's a lesson that I needed to learn. So we went in, and it was a wait, and it was numbers, and my number was way up there in the triple digits. And I waited half a day. What if God was one of us? What if God was one of us? The caseworker looked at me and said, why are you here? She said, you you, you speak like you're intelligent. I'm in college, mama said, no she ain't. She's so smart, she quit. Mama just wants to make sure she's all right. I don't know how long I'll be in the hospital. She said, why would you do that to your mother? I didn't have sense enough to cry because my ego did its own dance. You ever have that happen? That was not Christ consciousness expressing. That was ignorance expressing through me that day. But I got a general relief card and she said to me, she said, ma'am, young lady, 
you're going to have to work for this money so you will have work detail at the courthouse. I'm thinking I can go sit in the judge chambers and dust furniture. I could do that. When I arrived there, I got a toilet brush. It was painful for me because of that ego dance. But I saw some older ladies there just like my mama cleaning next to me. And they heard my story and they said, child, get back in school. Do something with your life. Your mother's doing the type of work that I'm doing so you will never have to do it and look at you. There's nothing wrong with that. As I said, that fed me. So I'm inviting you to look at the Christ consciousness of the people who come and ask you for a dollar. Have one folded up in your pocket. Give it to them. And see the love. A. Helwa, an author and a poet, says, love is the reason there is something instead of nothing. It is the soil. I'm sorry. It is from the soil of love that all existence blossoms into being. Love is why we are here. Bishop Michael Curry says, love is the answer. Do y'all agree with me? Love is the answer. I'm talking about that agape love. I'm talking about that selflessness that we all have. Because here's what's happening. We have seen these lines for a little over a year, so some of us may have become numb to them. But sometimes I think spirit is speaking to us through these numbers and saying, go forth and do something. You are on this planet having this experience to evolve into your greater level yet to be. How can you evolve into that if the something that you choose to do is nothing? Because doing nothing is doing something. Amen? And doing that nothing is the something that I dare say you may not want to do. I know I don't. What if God were one of us? What would you call him? I would call him Jamal. I would call him Ho Chin. I would call him or her. Brother David, Sister Althea, Peggy. I would call him or her Sister Flo. What if God were one of us? What would you ask God? What would you say to God? Sometimes I ask more than I used to. When I arise in the morning and I do my prayer work, I'm a religious science minister, but I read my Bible because I grew up with it and I like it. And I read my daily guides. And then I pray and I say, Father, Mother, God, what is mine to do today? And I invite you for the next five or six days, starting today when you do your now I lay me down to sleep. Ask the question, what is mine to arise and do tomorrow? How can I be a rainbow in somebody else's cloud? As me being a rainbow in somebody else's cloud, going through my closet, my luggage, where I've traveled at these hotels and wanted to get the extra little shampoos and deodorants and body wash, yeah. Because usually those are the things that they don't have enough of. It's being a rainbow in somebody else's cloud, 
making sure that perhaps you don't take food to your local pantry, but you take personal care items? I would say yes. It's being a rainbow in somebody else's cloud because God has been so good to you to bless you to be able to travel and get these things to pay it forward. And it's being a rainbow in someone's cloud going through your closet and seeing what you can donate here to the store and that that can't go to the store that you can donate to your local food banks or shelter or places for women or men who will be going back to work soon and will need some trousers. Oh, I'm sounding like mama. A pair of pants, baby. Be that rainbow. Because when I look at all this stuff and I look at the lines, darn that Google, and I see what's happening, the glass is still half full. My God is mighty. I believe my God is the same as your God. I believe in the book of Ephesians when it said one God, one faith, one baptism. That meant all we ends. That's what oneness is about. Amen. So let us take this into prayer. Let us take this into the knowing that the goodness of God is in you if you allow it to manifest, if you allow it to come forward, if you allow yourself to go talk to that neighbor next door that you haven't spoken to because she may have parked on your grass a little bit pulling up the driveway. Go see about them. There's a woman in your midst, and I won't call Sister Althea's name. I'm going to make it quick. I see you back there. I've watched her over the last few months care for the neighbors on her street. Get on the prayer team call and say, y'all, we got to pray for so-and-so. Sending text messages. We got to pray for Brother David. All right now. He my brother too. Going to funerals and helping people. Be that rainbow in somebody else's cloud. Do y'all receive that today? Amen? Amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sister JJ. From all of us. Let's kick it up one time, shall we? Say, I don't care what's on TV about the state of the economy. Don't believe most of what I see I know what I know to be God is so good all the time God is so good all the time God is so good so good so good all the time all the time well I walk by faith and not by sight Cause what seems wrong today tomorrow might seem right all
Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Brother Eddie Watkins Jr. for that wonderful music. Oh, thank right. you, JJ, for being here as well. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Absolutely. It's that point in time in our service where we take our tithes and our offerings, whatever gifts we're able to give into our hands. And if you're on Facebook, just push the little button, or maybe you will. Some of you will well, use the instrument in the back on the counter to give, but. Let's say our offertory blessing together. And we know that divine love, moving in and through me, blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And thank you that we are giving with a loving spirit, a cheerful heart. God loves a cheerful giver. So give and you shall receive. New Thought Unity Center and the community that surrounds us profits from our giving. And we do much in this building to be of service. So thank you for blessing each person in this sanctuary, each person online as they dig a little deeper and give with a loving spirit. And every gift is a blessing. And so it is. Namaste and amen. Well, I see we have two chaplains on duty today, Susanna and Lauren. So if you have any prayer requests, just see a chaplain, and they will be glad to be uh, of service to you by praying with you. Or if you have a celebratory event you want to celebrate in prayer, they'll do that for you also. They and we hold sacred space before, doing, and after service. So take advantage of their services today and get a prayer, get a prayer answered by our chaplains. Thank you. All right. I want to thank everyone that's here today and thank everyone that made this, uh, this celebration possible, starting with our uh, board of trustees who um, take the temperatures and, and for Don for setting things up this morning. Give it up for Susan and Rick back in the tech booth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What about the band? Yeah, 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 yeah. My yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you're doing double duty. I'm doing the best I can, Lord, oh, in this sanctuary. Woo! Amen, amen, amen. Okay, I'm good. Oh, and JJ, my sister from another mother. And uh, our, we're going to have her back again and again and again. And I'm thankful for everyone here, uh, live and in person. Here are some people that are on the, um, the live feed. Brenda says, Althea. You got me doing aerobics in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> David says love to all. Betsy and Julia say hi from Clifton. Uh, Danny says hello from his sunroom. How fun is that? Doing well. church on his sunroom. Maria says she's glad to be with us and God is good. Amen. So I want to remind everybody online and everybody here, don't forget about the Friendship Zoom Room after the service, you can talk to people that you probably haven't talked to in a little while. We want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, next week, um, oh, Earth Day is, is this coming week, and Lauren Watson is going to speak to us next week, and it's going to be great. And so um, we invite everybody back again and again. Want to make and, and oh. Regina is already back there if anyone uh, wants to uh, more information about the center. David. Yo. Can we have everybody repeat our phone number again? We haven't done that for a we while. We haven't done the phone number? Well, no, we haven't done the phone All number. All right, let's do it. Ready? Five. Five, one, three, nine, six, one, two, five, two, seven. Susanna, I mean, Susan and Linda will answer the phone and will be glad to assist you in any way they possibly can. <laughs> Let's everyone stand up. And um, if you have somebody that you can hold your hands, we're starting to hold hands again. Isn't that great? And um, if not, let's hold our hands out as if, if we're making that circle around this sanctuary that's been done 
for over a hundred years now in this very spot where we come together as one and know our prayer for protection and our peace song. So together we know the light of God surrounds me, the love of God enfolds me, the power of God protects me, the presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is and all is well.